So I'm on the way to the chateau to meet Nick, the tree surgeon, who's an expert in taking down trees. There's just one little tiny problem about this tree. Well, it's just that this tree is kind of on the inside of the chateau. Yeah, the tree's just above that bit. The plus side is a lot of it really supported on that one. Yeah. Fortunately. See here is the worst bit. The trouble is these floors are shot now, aren't they? Yeah. The first one's to clear some of this out of the way, so we've got room to work. Yeah, I just come in with a saw and just nip these down. You're right at the top of it, more interesting. <laughs> You're dreading this now, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, okay. I guess you'll know when you start climbing it how stable it is. Yeah. If it looks too, too unstable, it'll actually be a cherry picker job or something. Yeah. Or ladders onto the ring beam. Potentially. Yeah. I think there's plenty of stuff to hook onto, you just don't know how stable it is. Yeah. That's the problem and here. When you're in there, you just, you just never know how they're going to react. Yeah. Yeah, that's what put me off doing anything with it. Just being up at any height, you know, and not knowing how it's going to fall or... And with a chainsaw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've seen boards around a tree before. It's definitely on it, it's growing into it here. Yeah. I don't think them beams are that thick. No. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I won't lie, I don't know how wobbly it feels with you up there, but it looks fucking wobbly from down here already. It feels very wobbly up here. <laughs> The beauty is if it goes over at the moment, it's going to touch the corner of the building. Yeah, assuming the corner of the building stays where it is, yeah. Well, first person to be on a second floor for a while. <laughs> yeah, I've never worked inside on a tree before. Never taken the drone out of the tree before. Any equipment on the patio? Okay, uh, let me just move the drone. Ah.
can feel that on the floor. I can feel that on the floor. Yeah. Can you not drop that bit? What I might do is get down to that bit. Yeah, I can feel it here as you're cutting. It's yeah, I can pull that down. Yeah, lift it. So different in there. This has made such a difference in here. You can just see, actually, the space looks smaller because you're used to the canopy being another four meters above, but. Oh, wow really opens it up. I remember quite well the facilities on each floor. In the basement were the heating and charcoal containers, the kitchen, the cellar, the reserves, the laundry room, and the wood stock. On the ground floor, in the entrance, there were sinks and a further three wings of the castle, three dining rooms for the children, medium, and old. Outside meal times, these dining rooms were used for various other uses. The dining room, for adults, was connected to a space immediately outside the kitchen by a staircase. There was no porch or balcony like the others had. Two cylindrical granite pier pillars flanked the staircase that led to the second floor. There were two dormitories for the little ones here, and as well two small rooms for the supervisors. A large space where showers and toilets, but it was not possible to wash. On the immediately upper floor, there were two dormitories for the means boys and girls shared rooms. If my memory is accurate, in the time there were 15 children in one, 14 in the other. Another floor reached the base of the tower. We found here the dormitory of the big girls, as well as Lot Schwartz in charge of the grown-ups. Even higher in the tower, there was a room that served as storage room, and even higher, quite at the top, there was a small room that had been found no use of other than to meet friends. 